Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. We're here once again with Trevor Kenyon, Special K. You are the break into electric boogaloo of Tesla coils. Okay. <laughs> so, I, uh, in building the big Captain's Command Console computer thing, I, had, uh, I got these really cool Ergotron monitor mounts. And they had these on them. This was the bottom of the monitor mount to, for like the big super clamp because right. they hold like two widescreen 23 inch monitors. Oh. So I had these left over because I just, I was like, well, that's, you could do this better. You just drill a hole through the desk and clamp it down. So I got these and I was looking at these because I got a lot of free time, you can tell. And I was like, you know, if you took, if you took two of those, you can make a spark gap. Bam. And it's an adjustable spark gap because we don't actually need two, but we'll do it with two just because we can. But you put a like a a brass knob on the end, and you just turn that in, and you can adjust the gap. You can close your gap in and set your safety for your NST and go from there. Now, what does a bigger gap do versus a smaller gap? Well, okay, you got to think about how a spark gap switch works. This. All right, um, we're gonna go to the whiteboard. Okay. Yeah. Because we're gonna, we gotta, we gotta illustrate science. Let's say, remember when we were playing with the NST and the arc would jump, say, <coughs> the 15 kilovolt NST will jump. Let's let's say on its own it'll jump a half inch. All right. Okay. And uh, and that's 12 kilovolts. Now, if the air pressure goes up, that the voltage required to jump that goes up. If the humidity <coughs> goes up, it go, the voltage required goes down. Okay. If the, the temperature changes it, the, if you put it inside a bubble and fill it with sulfur hexafluoride. I know it. Sulfur SF6. hexafluoride looks like. I get a, I'm not a chemist. I get a cookie just for knowing it. If you, just, if you fill it with sulfur hexafluoride, the voltage goes crazy up. If you fill it with oil, then it's like 100,000 volts. It's nuts. But we can't change all those variables. Right. And a lot of them, like temperature, specific air pressure, and humidity, <coughs> change all the time on their own. So what we do is we have our gap, and we make one side on a screw so it's adjustable. And now you can tweak it, and you can set it from the NST just on its own. And then this in the circuit, if the gap is bigger, the voltage per bang is bigger. But if the voltage per bang goes too high, you'll cook the NST because the capacitors raise the voltage more than the NST wants, and you'll burn down the NST. Okay. Which is why for serious systems, you have a safety gap. And we might put a safety gap on this just to give us something to talk about for a shoot. All right. um, but you set the gap every time before you run a coil. It's really easy to do. And then you run the coil, and you're set. If you want smaller bangs, then <coughs> you bring the gap closer together. But it's, it's a voltage-controlled switch. Okay. Um, as opposed to with like the big coils where we use a rotary gap where that's controlled by position because you've got your electrodes on your big wheel and then your stationary electrodes and these connect together and that's off and when it spins around because this is spinning it comes on, off, on, off, on, off and you control the speed of the disc to say exactly 1,800 RPM or <coughs> 3,600 RPM and that gives you your bang rates. Okay. And you can, like on ours, we've got like a dozen electrodes all the way around so that we can really tweak it, and there's a whole thing to it. Um, but for, for what we're doing here, the simplest is the easiest. Adjustable static spark cap. And there's easier ways to make a static cap. Um, some people do it with like, um, a common way is you take just a bunch of pieces of copper pipe and glue them down to something or even bolt them down space by space by space and you put a, a, like a 30, 35 thousandths gap between them. Okay. And then you just wire in whether you want one gap or 20 gaps and that's how you adjust your gap. That way that's a really easy way to do it. And for the people at home that are trying that, we're, we should do a video on that one of these days. But the easiest way to make a gap like that is you get a credit card, like my awesome Craig's Cruisers credit card. <laughs> A credit card is almost always right around 20 or 30 thousandths thick. Um, mine that I measured was like 35 now. Okay. And that gives you a nice consistent gap because you just put the card in there and you smush them together and then you glue it down. And it works really well. I built several gaps that way, just credit card gap. 
Um, so there's your cheap at-home feeler gauges for spark gaps. But today, we're gonna build one of these. So I think the first thing we gotta do really is uh, just get a plate. This, this really could be as simple as just getting a plate, drill some holes, put some bolts in, and we gotta get it lined up so we know we've, uh, we're gonna add balls to this and we're probably gonna make the balls. I wanna check some hardware stores and see what we can find, but right. the easiest way to get balls to fit them, drawer knobs. Okay. Go to like a big box store like Home Depot and go in the, the cabinetry section and they've got a million different knobs for drawer pulls and we'll just get a knob that fits this. Okay. So it's, it's crazy easy, but that's my project was, uh, I just I figured, hey, these will work great for a gap, let's give it a shot. So today we're gonna make it and mount it and then uh, you can go shopping and find, I'll let you take this with you, All right. and you can find knobs that fit. And if we can't get knobs that exactly fit, well, we've got a big lathe over there and taps and dies and drills and all that jazz, and we can make it fit. All right. All right, so find a base plate. Let's go hunting parts, and you find a base plate, and I'll find bolts, and when we come back, we'll build a gap. Okay. All right, cool. You guys stay tuned. We'll have more after this. I learned how to run a machine shop. Set up an enterprise level server. Program nine foot robots. Make lightning. Edit video. I'm building a radio station. Light bulb terrarium. A high performance electric car. I'm a CNC geek. Computer geek. Robot geek. Physics geek. AV geek. I'm a radio geek. Craft geek. Car buff. No matter what kind of geek you are, we've got a place for you here at the Geek Group. Come join us. We build awesome. All right, we're back, and we've got a fabulous piece of Acetron which is pretty much the transformer of plastics. It sounds like one of the Decepticons. The reason we went with this instead of UHMW <coughs> is if we drill and tap this, because these bolts are just gonna go in like a little bit, Right. well, we can drill and tap this, and it's a lot stronger so that they won't tear out. Okay. Um, over the break, I was thinking, this on the inside has these little really wide flathead bolts. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll bet if you check with our buddies at boltdepot.com, they can get these with like bigger heads or stuff. So you can just get a handful of these. Since this is such a low power coil, that's gonna last you forever. Okay. So we can just use these as the actual thing. If you wanna be really cool, get a set of stainless ones, but I don't think you need it because you've only got 60 milliamps. I find that a little humorous. Yeah. Low power Tesla coil, but it can still kill you. I can kill you, but you'd have to work for it. So we've got our thing, we've got our mounts. What if we put that on it? Will it fit? Close. No, there is, there is no close. It's threaded differently. It's, to it's a totally different side. That's, that's a fine thread, that's a machine thread, and that's a big thread. But you could do something. You could put like a big nut on the end if you want. So I'm gonna mark this. We'll get it square. You gotta pay attention how I do this because I'm gonna make you do it too. I'm paying attention. Pay attention. There'll be a test after. There will. Okay. <laughs> God. All right, I'm just gonna put it like right up I'm gonna be Not sad quite to the edge. Done with this. Why? I think it's funny you think we'll ever get this thing done. True. Draw a circle. Draw a circle. There you go. That now, just took my nuts off. It's gonna. <laughs> it's okay if It'll you punch yourself in the today. nuts. Second time. All right, today. you want to line that up really good and you just look at it from like you look at it from the front mm -hmm. and see if you're centered and then you look at it from the side and see if you're centered and then now you want to be careful not to wiggle it around because we're going to chase that with a tap and you don't want to go into the table oh like it'd be the first time i ever drilled a hole through the table <laughs> <laughs> that never happens totally oh i didn't think so anymore. You're always so careful. This is a precision instrument here. <laughs> All right. That's a good hole. So you line up your point. I bet you say that a lot. Get it from the top. It's a kid's show. I can't comment on that. I got <laughs> Family show. Family show. I drilled into the table just for you right there. 
Okay. Now, <laughs> now we've got our tap, so. Oh, I thought you were just gonna let the bit lay in the tape. No, because I'd lose a bit and I'm gonna need it for the other half. So, <laughs> otherwise I'd have done it. And I'm gonna go way down to first gear. Here, you hold that securely, rigid, like a boss. All right, I'm gonna check over here and make sure I'm vertical. Check here and make sure I'm vertical. Chase that first one again. There we go. Now, if we did everything right, that should bolt right down. Give it a shot. Should fit and everything. Mm -hmm. there. Make sure they both go in. If they both go in, we're fine. You got it? Yeah. There, okay. Just now we need a screwdriver. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, here, now you gotta build the other side. Okay. Then it's a learning experience that we share together. This beautiful moment. All right. Do try they have to try be and get it up though, right? Yeah, they got it well roughly. Roughly. Okay. I wouldn't go I I came in about an eighth inch off the edge. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that was a beautiful circle I just made. You good? Yeah, I just made a beautiful circle. Oh, you're so talented. Thank you. We're gonna hang that on the fridge. You mean it? Just for you. Cause you're special. I don't know where the hell you put the cap. I got the cap. You gotta drill the holes. Now if the holes aren't in the right spot, it won't line up to this and then you're screwed. Yeah. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Watch. And instead of all top, get a hand down here. Like that? No, like watch. Hold this like that. Yep. Okay. You take this and line it up with your thumb. Oh, okay. And it's a lot easier to rest it against your thumb than to try and do this. Okay. Because you're all over the place, but just put your thumb right there. And that gets you right where you want to be. Give it a little, just a little thing, then you've got your divot. Okay. And you're going to, yeah, you're, you're back in third, so you're cool. Yeah, once, once it gets the little divot and the bit doesn't wander anymore, then you use your other hand to hold the block. Hey, don't drill a hole in the table. <laughs> We're professionals. Right. It slipped. No, you've already made a divot. You're, you're committed. Trevor? Okay, I'm gonna have to move it just, just a little, little forward. Table. I know. All right. Yeah, when you do this one, move it forward. Drill, see the dot right there? Put that drill that around. dot. Okay. I spent like a half hour trying to drill a hole one time until and once I finished drilling it, I realized that I had the drill in reverse. <laughs> it's true. I know that pain. We had to do, uh, on the Gemini control cabinet, mm -hmm. we had to do the main power pass-throughs. And I sent Kidwell to the store to get a hole saw. And it's an aluminum panel. He got an abrasive hole saw, which is designed for cutting rock. 45 minutes to drill through something that thick. Really? Yeah. That's, it was like a piece of 12-gauge sheet aluminum. All right. Dad! <laughs> That's assault. <laughs> now, hang on. Light pressure. You're oh. not pushing. You're not drilling. You're going to let it feed itself. Just the weight of the tool is enough. Really slow. Ease into it. And it's going to dig and it's going to move through. Because if you, if you yank it either way, You'll smush the threads and it won't work. Okay. And that's the only piece of plastic we have.
Hang on a second. Yeah, you're in drill. Okay. Go just, deeper just, or come out now? Go all the way until you run out of tap. Stop. Now back out. Slow. Just a little bit of tension because when you when it comes out, you want it to pop out. Um, and not sit there and ruin, and not sit there and ruin that first thread. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now do the other one. All the way down. Stop. Because if you go in past the threads, you'll screw up the top threads too. But the reason you want to use all but like the last thread is if you look at the tap, it gets narrower as it goes down. Mm -hmm. So it starts out barely taking any material. And it, does, it isn't actually cutting the full thread until you're up to here. You can see where it, it evens out. So mm -hmm. you're halfway into the tap before you're actually cutting the whole thread. Mm -hmm. And here's a screwdriver. It's a classic one right there. That's your, that's your Stanley 2702. I got that in a big war. That's an old screwdriver. It's got a wood handle. Don't over tighten them, because if you really reef on that, you will pull the threads out. And when we. The next step, like we'll we'll come back on this at some point in the future. Now you gotta do the other side. We'll uh, put a ring terminal here to connect your wire to. Okay. We'll just put like a little bulldog on it. Um, I don't have any in stock that tiny today. I've got them for 750 MCM, but I don't think you need inch thick wire. Um, we'll pick up a couple little bulldogs for this with just like a screw terminal, and then you've got a gap. Ha. Huh. I can laugh at you. Why? Mine's straighter than yours. Yours isn't straight at all. That's okay. I'm straighter than you, so I think we're fine. That was beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I got. I went with what I got. Now, to tighten this on there, I'm just going to put this through there and tighten that on. It was already tight. It wasn't that tight. It didn't move. I worry about it coming out. I had a concern. For your safety, you have to protect the wee precious children. There, you got a gap. And there's enough room in between that if we want to add electrode balls or something like that, like if you find something neat at Home Depot or something, we can use that. But you just start it together, and then we'll set it up with a neon sign transformer to test it. We'll do a whole, we'll do a specific video on how to set a safety gap. Okay. Um, but this is your primary spark gap. All right. So that's pretty cool. And it'll in in practice, in use, it'll probably be about that open. All right. And if we want to get really fancy, we could back it up with nuts. But I, I like the idea for your first coil of having you actually have to manually set this every time you use it. Um, when you're done using the coil, bring these all the way back together. Because if they're all the way together, you won't blow something up. If they're too far apart, you can kill your NSTs. All right. Or your caps. But it's pretty hard to kill the types of caps you're about to have. So that's, that's it, you build, a, you build a spark gap. All right, so that's the video on how to build a simple, adjustable, static spark gap from just stuff you have laying around your house and putting together furniture. You guys have fun, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Trevor Kenyon. Special K. We'll be back next time for more fun and excitement as we learn how to build a, uh, we're gonna do the MMC next, I All think. Right. I think, it depends on if Kidwell gets the parts, but he's, he's ordering them. Paul, order the caps. Rate, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, yes! Nut shot! No, nut shot! You missed. You missed. Keep that. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.